Welcome to Technovation. I'm your host, Peter High. My guest today is Rajan Kumar. Rajan is the Chief Information Officer of Intuit, a nearly $13 billion revenue financial software company. Rajan has been in his current role since August of 2021 and with the company for seven years. He's a product-centric Chief Information Officer who's driven one of the most extensive cloud adoption journeys in corporate America. I look forward to learning more about his journey as a tech executive during this conversation. Rajan, welcome to Technovation. Great to speak with you today. Hey, thanks, Pete. Great to be here. Uh, thanks for having me. Looking forward to the conversation. Likewise, likewise. Well, look, I, Intuit is a, a, a well-known brand, but uh, perhaps there are some people that don't understand the edges of the business. And I wonder if you could take a quick moment and provide an overview of Intuit uh, in its current form. Sure, Peter. Happy to. Um, I think Intuit, not many people know Intuit is a company that's been around for almost 40 years. We build software that people use to understand their finances as well as their financial lives. Uh, We have a bunch of different software within our product. Uh, We have QuickBooks. Small businesses use QuickBooks to manage their accounting, manage their books, you know, manage paying their employees, paying their invoices. We use TurboTax. It's used by consumers to pay their taxes. Uh, you You can file your taxes yourself. You can file it with us or you can completely delegate that to our expert. We also have Credit Karma. It's a data platform that's being uh, that offers you best of the class financial product for your unique situation and help you save money. And we also have Mailchimp, you know, which is a complete end-to-end commerce and marketing platform, you know, which basically helps small businesses scale as well as get the right messages to their customers at the right time, you know. We are uh, we are a mission-driven company. You know, our mission is to power prosperity around the world. Across our platform, we put the power of technology and data on the side side of our customers, and we are really, really proud of that. Uh, great overview. Thank you for that, Rajan. Talk a bit about your role as Chief Information Officer. Uh, what, what's within your purview in that role? Sure. Um, I mean, first of all, it's a really rewarding and uh, exciting journey to be part of uh, you know part of the transformation of a forty year old company to AI driven expert platform. You know that is Intuit's kind of broader vision. Uh, Everything at Intuit starts with what we call customer obsession. You know, for that, you need to have deep customer empathy. So uh, my role at Intuit is to ensure as CIO is to ensure that our technology investment within our IT organizations are broadly aligned with kind of broader uh, Intuit strategic investment as well as our big bet. And we'll touch on big bet maybe later on. You know, those are our declared big bets, which are posted on our uh, website as well. I, along with all of the team members within IT, you know, partner very closely with all our business stakeholders as well as accelerating functions, you know, to understand their business need, uh, you know, how can we support them in their business strategy as well as big bets, you know, we partner very closely, understand that. And based on that, we put together our roadmap, based on that, we put together our offering, our services, as well as the product that we offer to our customers. Our mission within IT within Intuit IT is to basically transform our employees to work at highest level through technology so they can do the best work of their lives and they can help, you know, Intuit's external mission to power prosperity around the world. Well, let's get into some of those big bets, as you as you noted, uh, Rajan, on on your website, there are five of them noted. I wonder if you can provide a little bit of a thumbnail sketch and perhaps uh, uh, choose one or multiple where you can highlight uh, the technology role in helping breathe life into the big bet. Sure. Um, I am specifically excited about, let me touch on Big Bet 2. You know, there are all five, you know, it will take a long time to go through that. You know, the first one is focused on data. Second one is focused on what we call AI driven expert platform, the, what's our virtual expert platform. But there are three core pillars of this virtual expert platform, what we call AI driven expert platform. You know, the first pillar is open, uh, basically open platform. We feel strongly that nobody can do it alone. We partner with uh, our accountants, you know, we partner with the developers, we partner with financial institution, we partner with the educational institution to basically provide the solution to solve our customers' most pressing problems, you know, as well as to provide awesome experiences. You know, the second pillar of this platform is what we call adoption of AI, basically that help us automate, that help us predict and offer personalized experience to our uh, customers. And the third pillar of this is, and that's where I'm going to connect kind of what role IT plays in that, you know, the third pillar is to support this open platform through AI, you know, 
even with that, a lot of people still feel, you know, uh, they want to talk to humans, you know, when they when they want to make financial decision, when they want to do their books, when they want to file their taxes, they still want to some human behind the scene. And we, that's where we offer our expert services on our platform, you know, what we call virtual expert services. And uh, over the years that 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 business has grown significantly, you know, exponentially, I would say, you know, when we started this journey about uh, maybe three, three and a half years ago, uh, the way we used to hire this expert was very, very manual, you know, uh, as we continued to grow, we realized that this is becoming like a big bottleneck in terms of just, you know, onboarding these experts onto our ecosystem, you know, especially at the scale that we have been growing for the last couple of years, you know. So we basically ended up, we looked at many third party products, just like a typical IT organization, you know, what is available in the market. First, we looked at third party recruiting system, but we soon realized that none of those system can scale to the automation needs that we have, you know, especially to hire at this scale every year, you know, during the tax season, this third party system could not meet our needs. So we ended up basically deciding that we'll build this from the bottom up. And that is where the power of, you know, where you started the conversation of, Product product driven IT organization comes in. So we 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 put together we partner with our uh, you know the team virtual expert team. We put together a you know strategy behind this how we are going to build a recruiting platform. You know that's what we call expert hiring platform. So we build that platform from the bottom up. Uh, we went live about uh, you know about about six months ago. That has been a huge you know, huge game changer in terms of just building end to end workflow, building the automation and this whole expert hiring process, you know, saves tons of hours to our recruiters behind the scene. But even most importantly, it provides the awesome experience to the expert as they go through the hiring process as compared to what it was perhaps even, you know, year, year and a half ago when we did not have this capability behind the scene. The fascinating story and highlights really the evolution in some ways of your offering, uh, Rajan, and the evolution of, of people's uh, you know willingness to to operate uh, with technology, some combination of technology and people to get the services that they they want. And you you, you mentioned as part of your response that naturally different customers have differing needs, uh, different ways in which they want to interact. Um, and I wonder how you and the broader team think about those those customer journeys, uh, recognizing that there are going to be those differences. And naturally, it's not a one size fits all solution for everyone. How do you interact with them to highlight that? Yeah, that's a great question, Peter. I think one of my learning has been throughout the years being in similar kind of roles, as well as at, uh, you know, being CIO of uh, Intuit. I think you need to you need to understand the maturity of your own organization as well as you know your partner organization so you need to meet your partner organization where they are you know what i mean by that is we partner very closely with all the business unit and accelerating functions there is much consistency but we also tailor to individual needs you know we meet we partner with a cfo organization very differently as compared to how we partner with you know uh, let's say chief marketing organization, you know, or how we partner with our HR leaders, you know, depending upon the business needs. Um, what the product driven organization does that we have product manager, just like any other typical, you know, engineering organization or typical product development organization, we have product manager, they are very closely connected with the with the business units, you know, as well as their strategy, you know, that help us kind of understand that strategy and then have a seat on the table to offer the technology solution, depending on the needs of the organization at different moment, as well as, you know, in the different uh, domain. I, I wanted to also ask you, I, I mentioned at the outset, yours is an organization that has been through a remarkable cloud transformation. Uh, most organizations of scale, uh, have embarked on journeys associated with transformation centered to the cloud. Few of your scale have done so as completely as you have. And I wonder if you could talk a bit about the methods uh, that you have used, as well as the advantages, uh, the benefits of, of the commitment that you've made. Uh, sure, Peter. I'm really, really proud of our accomplishment, you know, both as a broader intuit, you know, we have talked about this before, we are 100% in cloud, actually AWS, and the same for the IT organization. We are 100% in the cloud uh, for our custom built applications, we are in AWS cloud, and for our, you know, of course, third party application, we are in their SaaS wherever possible, you know. I think what 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 helped with this journey is being very, very intentional about it, you know, that's what I would say, number one. Second is the 
the focus on product and engineering that we have, you know, how the teams think about it, you know, uh, they don't typically think about a traditional IT organization. Hey, we cannot go to AWS. We have to keep this thing in house or we have to keep this thing, this application in data center. I think that engineering and product mindset that has been built over last many, many years, even before I started, I know you have been connected with Atticus in the past, you know, who started this journey of kind of, you know, product driven IT organization. I think that has been a huge catalyst in terms of just uh, building that mindset that we can do it and then finding the solution to, I, I wouldn't say there was no problems, you know, we find a lot of kind of gaps as we went through a multi-year journey to go to cloud, but we were eventually able to partner with our, either the, you know, partners, if it's our custom built solution with AWS in that context, but able to get to, you know, 100% adoption of uh, uh, cloud in our journey. To your second question about the benefit, I think the significant benefit that we have seen is just the speed and agility. I think the amount of efforts and the cycles that were being spent on infrastructure in the past, now we can spend those those time, effort, resources on actually, you know, innovation as well as supporting, you know, broader company strategy and the big bets. You know, I think that has been a huge difference as compared to where the IT organization was, I would say, when we were managing all this infrastructure in our own data center or we were managing it our own. I, I like that overview, Rajan. And I know a lot of your peers, the number one driving force that they go into a cloud transformation with is cost reasons. And though there can be certainly some cost benefits, I, I like the way you framed it, that the benefit is really speed and agility. Um, that, that, that really provides, I think, a different orientation of the team in terms of thinking about how this is framed relative to uh, trying to justify this as a, simply a cost play. F fair assessment from your perspective? Absolutely. And actually, in the I, on, thing I will add on top of that is actually in the short term, actually, you might see double bubble because you're running actually two parallel inf infrastructure at any point of time, you know, until you feel good about, you know, being 100% in the cloud. And that's exactly the journey we went through. There was definitely side cost benefit, but we didn't start from that, you know. And I think we did make the right decision. Uh, the speed and agility just has been amazing. Yeah, fascinating. Uh, you did mention also the... Uh the product orientation of the technology team. You did mention, uh, 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 certainly I have had the, the great opportunity to speak with your predecessor, Atticus Tyson, who was one of the um, earliest um, adopters as a CIO of a, of a product mentality and operating model. Uh, as such, you lead a team that has been pointed in this direction for longer than most. And so as the leader of a pretty well-oiled machine from a product perspective, product orientation, operating model perspective, I wonder if you can highlight um, beyond what you already have, have nicely done so relative to the cloud journey, uh, the advantages of that, uh, what it looks like after years of, of practice, so to say. I would say it's the, it's the art of saying yes. You know, I think the, uh, <laughs> what I mean by that is, I think for Intuit, when we think of a product organization, everything starts with customer obsession. You know, I think, you know, we are a very, very, heavy customer obsessed company in terms of just we look everything from the customer lens you know i think what that has done to your to your question the product mindset within the it organization what that has done is that we apply the same lens for every service every capability every offering that we have within it you know we think of it as a you know as a product that we offer to our uh, either internal employees or to external partners and in both of those contact the product manager is continuously thinking of okay what is coming six months you know ahead for me how do i partner with that particular business unit let's say finance organization to understand you know where do we want to take this product so having that vision and strategy always in in your mind about that particular capability i think that's what eventually makes the difference if you remember i think what used to happen in the past in a typical organization was, you know, IT is seen as a, you know, order taker to some extent, you know, you always wait for, you know, someone from the business to tell you, you know, hey, what to do or what to do. I think product driven mindset has, has been the huge catalyst that we have a equal seat, I would say on the table as, as a IT organization versus always waiting for, you know, uh, someone to tell us, you know, hey, what needs to be done. Yeah, that's a great overview. I appreciate that, Rajan. Another uh, uh, feature that those who know into it well uh, might think about is the fact that it's regularly uh, situated among those uh, who are the best places to work, those companies that are ranked among the best to work for. What I think is really interesting from conversations you and I have had off the record recently is 
the evolution of the thought process of developing a strong, cohesive culture in an environment where people are less together than they were in 2019 and for the decades prior to that. Uh, and I wonder if you could talk a little bit about and reflect upon uh, the changes that um, that are afoot in terms of how work is done and where it's done, but also the intentional uh, the intentionality of of ensuring that yours is it remains a strong culture that has been a uh, a strong feature and reason for people to join and stay with Intuit for the long term. Uh, sure, Peter, that's a great question. You know, I think. Uh... Before I get to that, I think we have, a, just to provide broader context, we have established a what we call hybrid working model, basically. Our goal is to bring the best of both worlds, best of virtual world that has been there for the last couple of years, as well as best of uh, in-person connections and the collaboration. With that context, we are requesting our employees to be back like between two to three days a week, and that is our declared strategy. You know, we've declared about a year and a half ago, and we are continuing on that journey. We are, what we are also realizing is to your point, you know, what worked in the old world, you know, prior to pandemic is doesn't necessarily work right now because the reason employees want to come to work is very different. You know, you don't want to come and just, you know, sit in your, uh, you know, sit in your office or sit in your cube all day. You know, it's more about collaboration now. It's more about building connections because you can do the work that you need to do in isolation, even when you are when you are remote for the rest of the day. So the idea of workplace is kind of changing, you know. So that is where we are focused on in terms of, you know, how do we create the best experience possible where we we help employees, employees to be as collaborative, as productive as possible while still maintaining our culture, you know, to your point, you know, how do we sustain the culture in this hybrid world as well as the inclusivity so everyone feels like they have equal seat on the table, even if when they are not in the office, you know, I think those are the broader goals that we are we are. We are still on this journey, I would say, we haven't figured out, you know, we are very clear about our strategy that this is where we want to get to and we are on that journey. We are doing a bunch of different experimentation in this space to, you know, both in terms of technology as well as in terms of just how do we maintain the, you know, culture and the inclusivity. I mean, few specific examples that comes to mind as simple as, you know, how do we ensure that there is a way for employees to you know, share with each other at any point of time, hey, uh, this week I'm going to be in office, you know, this particular day and that particular day. So folks can, you know, look at each other's profile, you know, and, you know, they can plan their day that they want to come to office accordingly. How do we replicate, for example, the water cooler conversations, you know, through our uh, collaboration tools, you know, uh, how do we, uh, how do we enable those kind of impromptu conversations that happen either before the, you know, before any meeting or after any meeting, right? How do we replicate many of those experiences? I think that's where our focus has been. I like the way you describe that, Rajan, and the fact that, uh, first of all, it is very intentional, the way in which you're managing this and thinking about how best to bring people together and why to bring people together. Also, I think it's really wise that you're preparing the organization uh, that this is an evolution. Uh, it's not as though all, all of the, the secrets are known uh, right away, but, but are revealed through continued experimentation with the potential for continued modification, presumably as time goes on as well. It's a, it's a great overview. I wanted to also ask you, uh, Rajan, we've talked about a number of rising trends, trends that uh, Intuit, in fact, has led that others are now following uh, suit on as well. Uh, I wonder, as you uh, think to the future, what trends particularly excite you? What are some things that are making their way onto your personal or professional uh, roadmaps that you you might call out? I think a couple of things that comes to mind, Peter. Uh, I think the one I would say with just with the context that we just talked about related to kind of this hybrid world, I think there is still a lot more to come in terms of, you know, the what the augmented reality, virtual reality, the role that they can, they, these technologies can play in just creating a, very immersive experience for the meetings, you know, that where you can, uh, you know, work together, you can build together, you know, uh, you can have those shared experiences, you know, in this virtual environment, you know, we are doing some experimentation in this space at a very small scale right now within IT organization, but I think there's a lot more to come, you know, in this space, you know, to make these experiences a lot more effective. So I'm really, really excited about that. Second one I would say is, you know, uh, I think with what we started the discussion with about our AI driven expert platform, you know, I think we have made humongous progress in terms of just personalized insights and the recommendations for our consumers, you know. 
What I'm excited about within that context for IT is how do we replicate same experiences for our employees as well? Actually, we are we are starting to work with our data organization to replicate some of the same experience for our employees. Basically, meeting our employees in their in their moment of needs. You know, for example, you know, depending upon how long you have been in any particular role, you know, based on your skills, you know. Can we make make more automated and personal recommendation for your next internal mobility? Hey, you know there is these roles open. You might want to look at it, and you might want to apply it. Other example that comes to mind is you know, you know maybe someone is looking for parental leave. You know, so we can offer them many kind of benefits that are available for new parents within the organization more proactively versus letting employees just have to figure out everything. Hey, what all the different things that I need to do as I'm starting kind of this new chapter of my life. So we are starting to think about how we can apply the power of this AI and ML to create as good of experience for our employees, what we do for our customers. That's what I'm really excited about. Double clicking on the artificial intelligence one more time, a, a thread that's been through multiple parts of our organization. You started off in talking about the open platform, for example, that no one can do it alone. And it would ser certainly seem to suggest that artificial intelligence is in the same vein, something that is a, a group activity, oftentimes involving an ecosystem, partners, uh, you know, uh, other people who have expertise, um, certainly providers of software and so forth. H how do you think about building an, an ecosystem uh, to help foster the artificial intelligence and machine learning uh, needs and, and br bring to life the opportunities that you've described? I, I, I believe, Peter, behind the scene, it's the power of data. I think where, mm -hmm. we are, where we are focused on is that how do we make sure that we have very clearly defined uh, strategy as well as the objective, how we are going to collect that data for the employees, of course, with the right guardrails around the security and the privacy, then different technologies or the different experience can use those data to potentially build those you know personalized insights and recommendation by using the power of ai ml sometimes we are building those uh, experiences ourselves for example we recently recently started a program where we are we are kind of revamping our whole intranet you know so for that we are building those experiences ourselves but for many others we are working with third party collaboration tools, you know, so that they can make use of the same data that we have available to help us make similar kind of recommendations coming from the different third party services and the experiences that we use for uh, our employees. That's really great. I also wanted to conclude by asking you, Rajan, as somebody who has reached a, a, a CIO position in an organization of such consequence as Intuit, uh, what have been some of the difference makers for you along the way on your pathway up to your current role? And I, I, I ask this uh, both because I'm interested, but also perhaps there are some lessons that might be useful for people who would wish to follow in your footsteps. Uh, what, what might you advise? Um, I would say go beyond technology. What I mean by that is technology is the table stake for IT leaders, you know, uh, you need to understand the business language, you need to understand the business metrics. Take the time to you know meet with your business partners, your you know CFO, your CMO, your HR leaders to understand their business objective, and why are those their business objective? You know, I think more you spend time with them, you will be able to relate with the business problem, and it will also help you partner with them and be an advisor to how technology can uh, you know eventually help in meeting this business objective. You know, if I have to pick one thing, I think that's what would be on top of my mind on. Uh, go beyond technology. That's a great piece of uh, advice. Well, Rajan Kumar, thank you so much for a great conversation, highlighting the remarkable work you and your team are doing at Intuit, a bit about your journey along the way as well, uh, some uh, a look into the future uh, to, to an extent to also. Uh, it's been a really great conversation. Thank you so much. Thank you, Peter. Uh, really nice talking to you. And I really appreciate actually you bringing, you know, technology leaders together, you know, to share their learnings with each other. I think it's really powerful. So thank you.